New this morning, Memorial Day, the unofficial start of summer, of mm -hmm. course. And as the temperatures start to go up, you might be looking to cool off in the water. But if you're not out on the boat, officials want to make sure that you stay safe and stay out of harm's way. Caroline Coburn is joined by first responders to talk about the best ways that you can stay safe while also enjoying the holiday. Hi, Caroline. Well, good morning, Robin Reba. We're here with Doug Reynolds with Henrico Fire, and basically we are on the boat that they say is a fire truck, basically on on the water. And it talks about what people need to know quickly, Doug, about wearing this this weekend when they head out on the boat. Yeah, if you're going out on the water, this is the gold standard. Always make sure you have a PFD on. You know, if anything happens, you're already you know in a better position. And always making sure if you're near the Pony Pasture area, Belle Isle, those Swift Creek, or rather Swift Water, yeah. is a danger. Yeah, you know, if you're in the city part up there on the river, make sure you check the water levels, and because if it's five feet or above, you're, it's mandatory to have a, a life jacket. Nine feet, you got to have a permit. So always check with the city on that. Awesome. I want to show you guys what they can use. You guys respond to rescues on this boat, but they also have firefighting capabilities. So the crew here is going to give us a heads up. Uh, we're going to start this water, and this is actually how they fight oh, yeah. uh, fight fires on the water. A boat fire. You can actually manipulate this. Uh, device. What is it called, Doug? Tell me what this is called. This is a, a monitor, so, so we're going to be able to use this. We got two of them on this boat. We can flow up close to 2,000 gallons of water. As you can see, we got commercial traffic on the, on the river. We got these containers. We just had a barge go by with a tugboat. So any of those things out here had the potential, you know, to catch on fire as well as a recreational boat. And we can also help you know, on a brush fire down on the river, a house that's down on the river, no hydrants, we can uh, run a hose and actually supply those engines in these rural areas. So it's really a cool toy, or, or I should say a cool to uh, tool that we have here in Henrico County that uh, we can do a lot with it. Like I say, it's our fire truck on the river. And everyone stay out and be safe this weekend. We don't want Doug and his crew to have to come rescue you. So have fun, stay safe. I want to give a shout out to this crew here. They've been with us all morning. They woke up early to make sure we could come out here and give you tips. Thank you to Doug. It's been a fun morning. And make sure this weekend, again, that you stay safe because you don't want to see Doug on the water. You just want to see him fun, having fun on your TV. There you go. <laughs> Rob, we <laughs> back to you. Love the all advice right. today. Yes, good. Captain Caroline Colburn mm -hmm. yes. live for us. And you don't want to see Doug. You'd be like, uh-oh, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> Why is Doug here? <laughs> I want Doug You're so right. <laughs> all right, man, she did a great job out there this morning. What a delight that was to see. And great information. Hey, our average is now up to 80 degrees. Today will be well below average. Yesterday we were 64. Today maybe a few degrees warmer than that. Our sun rose at 5.53, sets tonight at 820, but we should have a good thick cloud cover most of the day today. Uh, we are slightly above average now for the monthly rainfall and a little bit below for the annual, but I think we're good. Yesterday's rain was extremely beneficial, so it's not like we really need more at this point anyway. All right, we do have more though in the next few days to talk about. Let's take a look at a hike with the pups. Oh, I bet they love taking a hike. Look at they can't get enough of that. Which direction to look in first? Kay Brown sent hike with the pups in. Thank you so much, Kay. I really appreciate that. And we love seeing what you guys are doing out there on your hike with the kids there. All right, you can send your pics at fix at WTVR.com. Fix at WTVR.com. They just want to they just want to play and run. That's all. All right, I'll be back with more details on our next best rain chance coming up, guys. Back to you. <laughs> All right, thanks. A new way to get delivery sent right to your home. Coming up, we're going to tell you the chain that's expanding its deliveries in Richmond this way and how you can order some things like potato chips dropped off right at your front door. And today is National Missing Children's Day. What a local organization says parents should be actively doing to ensure the safety of their young ones. Well, today we're going to learn more about the victims from the Texas elementary school shooting that killed 19 children and two teachers. Some of the victims have already been identified. Police say the suspected shooter was wearing body armor and was later shot and killed by law enforcement. Now, following the tragedy, many parents are once again trying to figure out how to talk about this with their own children. CBS 6 talked to a board-certified child and adolescent psychiatrist about how to approach this discussion. Brendan King joins us live in the studio to break down conversations you can have with your own child and how to help them cope with what they see on the news. Brendan. Well, this morning you at home may be watching, contemplating, how do you speak to your child about something so horrific that happened 1,600 miles away? In reality, you probably already had a similar conversation before, but we spoke to a board-certified psychiatrist for those answers, and right now, once again, 
like we just mentioned, you, you may at home maybe be figuring out how to talk about this horrific crime. Well, Dr. Martin Buxton says every child is different. Reactions will certainly vary. Some may be very frightened or traumatized. They may not want to go to school today. Others may choose to avoid talking about it altogether. Well, on the other hand, if your child is expressive, if they're emotional right now, respond to their needs. But he says, do not try to force a conversation right now. And this is a really tough mission for parents because on the one hand, you want to respect their defenses. If they're not wanting to talk about it, they want to repress it, suppress it, avoid talking about it. There's a reason that their mind is choosing to do that. So you want to respect it. But I think the trick for the parents will be to be available, both emotionally, physically. Well, Dr. Buxton says as a parent, he would not ask the child lots of questions if that child has not yet initiated the conversation. He urges you to tell your student that teachers are there to help them. Law enforcement responds quickly in time of crisis. Robin Reba, so much more work needs to be done here. Absolutely. Brendan King reporting live for us. We're going to continue to keep you updated on this story as it develops on air and on our free CBS 6 News app. Of course, we'll have more on how Central Virginia is reacting to and the impact of this tragedy in our community. That's starting later today on the CBS 6 News at noon and later this evening on the CBS 6 News at 4.